So, this camera that I'm currently holding in my hand is getting close to 30 years old this year. It was built during the early and late 1990s, and it is a Polaroid instant camera, an analog instant camera. So it's really old, and it's really old tech. However, in the last few years, analog instant photography in the form of, for example, the Fujifilm Instax and the Polaroid Originals, or earlier the Impossible Project, have kind of seen a resurgence in popularity. So the question I asked for this video was, is this Polaroid actually still a viable camera in the year 2020, or is it more like outdated and not really popular? Let's take a look in Flying Kayak, Flying Vlog number 9. Alright, so this is a Polaroid Impulse AF, the AF standing for autofocus, meaning that this Polaroid camera is equipped with what is known as a sonar autofocus, which is this weird little thing you see here, which basically sends a pulse of ultrasonic sound out that then gets reflected back to the camera, and depending on the distance from the object that reflects it back to the camera, you can then calculate how far that object is away. And that allows the lens to automatically focus to the right distance. Similar to the modern autofocus we all know and use every day in our smartphones, our digital cameras, and our DSLRs and DSLMs. Now, that makes this a pretty high-end Polaroid for the time, actually. And it's a pretty cool and fun compact instant camera. But does it make sense to buy one of the many impulse autofocuses you would find on eBay? Well, first things first. Comparing this camera with any modern camera, like a modern mirrorless or even a modern reflex camera, will obviously yield one single result. And that is that this camera is way worse than any modern reflex or mirrorless camera, for obvious reasons. But this camera still has a lot of potential and a lot of fun to be had with it easily. And that's kind of what I wanted to get into in this video. Now, a lot of people are thinking about buying instant cameras for a set of reasons. And for me, those reasons were mainly artistic. I like the way the photos look. I love the concept of just shooting a picture and instantly holding a paper printout of said picture in my hand. And I really enjoy kind of the old school feel of shooting pictures with a camera that you have to manually expose and check that the settings are all right and the film speed is all right and everything is set perfectly for that moment. And I love the fact that you have to wait for the picture to develop and you don't know if it's going to turn out the way you want it and every picture is going to turn out a bit differently and every picture is going to turn out a bit weird and there might be things that you don't like and there might be things that you really like about the picture when it comes out and there might be things you expected and there might be things you really didn't expect about the picture when it comes out. So there's a lot of difference in these Polaroid pictures and I really enjoy that. I really enjoy taking photos with it and I really just enjoy using this camera a lot. And that's why I decided to buy this camera. And I decided to check it out and see if it's any good and then give you guys feedback about whether or not this camera actually is a sensible camera. Now if you want to see sample images from this camera you can check out my Instagram or you can just Google for Polaroid sample images. I'm not really going to give you any because showing you these pictures in this video is a bit difficult for one and for the second part. Every Polaroid impulse autofocus is going to produce different types of pictures and every film is going to produce different pictures and every picture itself is going to be very different. So if I show you guys my results and you buy the camera expecting those same results, you'll probably not get them. So you might get better results, you might not get better results, it really depends. That's why I'm also not going to focus on image quality. But that's the beauty of photography, because unlike a lot of other things that are judged by their physical quantity and quality, photographs are not. 
A photograph is not purely judged by how sharp it is and how much color and dynamic range it's got. Otherwise, all we'd ever do is take focus stacking, super sharp, super detailed, super high dynamic range pictures. But that's not what we do. We use bokeh to create popping images, we change colors, we change saturation, we change luminosity to kind of really see what we can create with an image in terms of creating a feeling in the viewer. And that's something that these Polaroids do really well because they kind of take that out of your hand. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about them. But what I also really enjoy about this particular cam camera is that it's incredibly simple. This is an impulse autofocus. You just point it at something, you take a look through the viewfinder, and you click the shutter button. That's literally all there is to creating a picture with this camera. It's small, it's simple, it's fast. The picture will automatically be correctly exposed by a lighting sensor right up front. However, that lighting sensor does have a few issues. If, for example, you're standing in the shade, but your subject is in the light, your subject might be overexposed. If you're standing in the light, but your subject is standing in the shade, your subject might be underexposed. So, basically, in terms of exposure, you have a little manual control up front, which will allow you to change that exposure preset to overexposed or underexposed, and you can use that either creatively or depending on the shooting settings. So, even though it is a very simple, kind of point and shoot version of Polaroid cameras, it still offers you that manual correction to really get creative and create the shots you want to create. So that's a definite big bonus for this camera. The second big bonus for this camera is that it has a very fairly high film speed. So it has um, ISO 600, 640 film, I think that's the Polaroid 600 film, and that film is still being produced for this camera. So those are the two first big pluses I kind of wanted to mention. One, it's got a high film speed so you can shoot in dark environments and indoors, which makes it great for shooting parties or, you know, just setting it down during a house party or something and everyone can snap a picture and take it home with them. And it's got, um, of course, it's got that um, flash that does the same thing and you can manually control the exposure, which is good for a Polaroid point and shoot. It also has a timer. I haven't tried that function, but I suppose it works just as it does with the other Polaroid cameras. You push the timer and a self timer starts and then you can just take a picture. And once the picture is taken, it's going to come out the front and you have a simple exposed Polaroid picture. That's all there really is to say to it. The camera itself is super simple to operate. All you have to do is push out the flash. The flash will then start charging up on a new full battery that should take about three seconds before the flash is charged and then you can just use it by clicking the shutter button. It's gonna take a picture, the flash will always be on, and then you'll receive your Polaroid. Now, just to talk about a few things that I don't like about this camera. Number one, what I really dislike is that the flash is on in every picture, even if you shoot outdoors. That can create super weird lighting effects if you choose a framing of an outdoor shot where you have objects that are close to the lens and objects that are further away and you want them all to be exposed. So that's probably not the best way to do this. That's why this camera probably works a little better for portraits and indoors than it does outdoors for things like landscapes. There are other Polaroid cameras that work better for landscapes and outdoor stuff and I'm going to show you those cameras in future videos. The next thing that I kind of don't like about this camera is the fact that it is very plasticky and light. Even though it was a fairly mid-range Polaroid model, lower of course than the Reflex SX70 cameras, but still higher than the super cheap fixed focus Polaroid instant cameras, it does feel a little cheaper. It notably feels cheaper than my Spectra Polaroid camera and of course a lot cheaper than my SX70, which kind of bugs me because I really like to think of these cameras as fairly quality products. and I love to have that a bit more quality feel about them. Nonetheless, it's still a great and fun camera to use. Now, there's another few pros that I'm going to come to in just a few seconds. The first thing is, you can get these super cheap. I bought one for 5 euros. That's about $4 something. That's literally nothing, and I bought that one online. And you can find even cheaper versions at local garage sales, flea markets, you name it. You go there, you can get a cheap Polaroid camera 
that someone found in his basement and doesn't know what to do with. So you can get super cool, super cheap cameras for, well, super low price. And let's be honest, super cheap camera, super cool photos, what could go wrong? Another really, really cool thing about these cameras is that the film that's still being produced for them is starting to get better and improving over time. So you have the company Polaroid Originals, which is now only Polaroid, which creates film for these cameras. I don't have a film box here to show you guys because my film is loaded into the camera and they provide film for about 18 euros or your regional equivalent and that is fairly good film at the moment. When they started out producing film, I've heard that there were some issues with their film, but their newer films are really good. So you're going to have great film quality and you're going to have original Polaroid film and it's cool. Now, another thing that I don't think is that great about this camera in the year 2020 is that basically you don't have a lot of consistency. The cameras really change depending on which model you buy, depending on what camera you buy, depending on what you do with it. If you go on eBay, you enter Polaroid Impulse Autofocus, you're going to find thousands of listings and you got to pick one that works, you got to pick one that's tested in, in the optimal case, maybe one that actually allows you to get a refund if it doesn't work and you're going to have to pick one for a fairly low price. So you're going to have to really go digging to find just the right Polaroid Impulse Autofocus for you guys. Anyways, after all that I've said in this video, do I think that this camera still makes for a good Polaroid camera in the year 2020? Can it compete with modern Polaroid or modern instant film cameras like for example the Fujifilm Instax or Polaroid iType film cameras? And the answer is yes and no. It's super cheap, which is great. It's got good image quality, which is great. It works indoors, which is really good compared to some other Polaroid cameras like for example the SX70 which doesn't work indoors. And it's easy to operate but it still retains enough manual control to give you a good feel of what you're shooting. It doesn't have app control like the Polaroid iType cameras do or at least some of them do. It can't do all the cool stuff that the Polaroid iType cameras can do. It can't do double exposures, you can't manually set the exposure what you have to do is you have to set it or let the camera set it and then adjust it and that's always a bit iffy. Still, remember that this camera costs a fraction of the price of those cameras and it offers you a very similar build quality compared to modern iType cameras. So yeah, I'd buy one, again, if I had the chance because yes, these are really good cameras to enter into Polaroid. If you're not sure if you really want one of these instant cameras, if you're not sure if it's right for you or if you just want something fun to mess around, this is the camera for you. It's cheap, it's got film that you can purchase for it new, which is important, and it's easy to operate. You can't really go wrong with one of these. I mean, five euros on the internet. I know people that spend more on meals than five euros, so just go for it. In my personal opinion, that still makes this a very relevant instant film camera in the year 2020. It's definitely better than a lot of the other older Polaroid cameras you see on the internet that don't have autofocus, that might have fixed focus lenses, because those definitely have a lower lens quality and a lower image quality than this camera. And it's definitely a really cool starting point for your Polaroid adventure. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this little review of the Polaroid Impulse autofocus camera, and my personal opinion on it, I'd be very happy if you decided to subscribe my channel and perhaps even share this video or drop a like. Of course you don't have to. Also, I'd be super happy if you took a look at the other videos on my channel and maybe at my website, which you can find in the description below, where I try to share my experience with photography, cinematography and Polaroid pictures and drone flying and flight simulators and hopefully someday real world aviation with you guys because I love all of those things and I love sharing all of those things with you. So please enjoy, have fun, safe travels, blue skies and many happy landings to all of you guys out there and have a good one.